Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Well, today is going to be a big harvest day here on the homestead. Our spring garden is just in full production right now. Uh, this past week we've already picked 22 heads of cabbage and today we're going to start picking our cauliflower along with a lot of other things. So we're going to get started. It's starting to get hot out already and we just need to get down to work because I think this cauliflower is going to be huge today. Let's go take a look. At first I was kind of disappointed that we couldn't always see the plants underneath these row covers, but now I kind of feel like it's, it's almost like getting to open a Christmas present every time we look underneath. These cauliflower look amazing. You know, we've never had luck growing cauliflower without them getting completely destroyed by insects. So these floating row covers have really made the difference for us. We're so excited. I cannot believe the size of these cauliflower heads. Now this variety is Snowball, which is a hybrid variety, uh, but we just needed some success with cauliflower, which is why we tried a hybrid in this row. You will see that some of these heads on top, they're a little bit yellow, and that's because we did not take the leaves and cover them. Cauliflower heads start turning a little yellow on the outside because of exposure to the sun. It should not affect the flavor at all. So to be honest, I just really don't care. Uh, they look fantastic. I'm so excited to harvest them, get them in the house and start putting them up for winter. We've never had any success anywhere near this. I mean, I mean like it's night and day. This is amazing. So you guys, this is our spring cauliflower harvest. I didn't count how many I harvested, but there's a lot here. Yeah, I think we had 35 plants planted. Something like that. And I think we picked probably about 30. Right, exactly. So some of these we're going to blanch and freeze for the winter. Others we're going to pickle and uh, can for, you know, the winter also. So this isn't just for fresh eating for the summer. Although this, some of them will be. Right. This will go to help feed our family throughout the year. So we're very excited. I think when we do our fall planting of cauliflower, we're going to try this variety again. Yeah. Yeah. That's one nice thing here is that we can do another round of these in the fall. So we can end up with twice as many and that's gonna be amazing. Next up are the snow peas. We had Samantha come out here and pick snow peas just a couple of days ago and now they are everywhere again. So we're gonna go through and do a big harvest. Now we're planned to also blanch and freeze these. Although when I was taking the cauliflower in the house, I remembered that I really haven't tried fermenting any of these. So you never know, I might uh, be creative and experimental and try to uh, ferment either these peas or some cauliflower, maybe both, I don't know. But we need to get these harvested. So 
So not a huge harvest of the snow peas, but we will add these together with what we have in the refrigerator and it will add up to a couple of meals and every little bit helps. So next up is our turnips. I'm pretty sure that all of our turnips are gonna need to come out today. So we're just gonna go down the row. We're gonna pick them all. It's starting to get warm. If we leave them in the ground much longer, uh, they're gonna start to get uh, these little like worms that get in them. So we just need to get them out of the ground right now is about the perfect time. We'll be able to plant these again in the winter as well or in the fall. And honestly, in the fall, we can leave these in the ground most of the winter and then just come out and pick them as we need them. But this time of year, they need to get out. They don't do well in the heat. So we're gonna go down the row, we're gonna pick them, we're gonna cut the tops off and we're gonna leave about this much stem on each one. Uh, and then the uh, tops we're going to give to our goats and, and rabbits and chickens and everybody else. Oh wow, look at that. And not a single bug bite on it. Again, I think we're at just the perfect time right now. Uh, some of these things, when you notice that they're ripe, you just gotta get out there and do them because otherwise you wait even a few days sometimes and you've made a big mistake. So these are perfect. These are beautiful. Now, a lot of times we will eat the greens. We actually like greens, uh, but right now we just have so many different types of greens coming in at once. We're growing collard greens, which are one of our favorites. Uh, we also are growing spinach. We have the broccoli greens, the uh, cabbage greens. We're going to be picking our beets here in just a few days, and then we'll have beet greens. So it's just kind of beet, or it's just kind of green overload right now. Uh, which is why we're going to give these to the uh, animals. Uh, the turnip greens are probably one of our least favorite, so we'll give these to the animals and we'll keep the ones we like the best for ourselves. Well, that is an awesome harvest of turnips. <laughs> and now it's starting to rain, so we need to get them in the house before they get all wet. <laughs> these turnips are amazing. I've been coming out to the garden and just eating them fresh right from the ground. I wanted to show you guys that I'm not a liar when I tell you how I do things in the garden. A good gardener always has their salt shaker right in their pocket with their knife. That way when you're out here, when you find something good, you're just ready to eat. It's perfect. We're gonna get these in the house. There is one more thing that I am going to harvest before I start preserving in the house, and that is the spinach behind me. It is actually starting to bolt, so I just need to cut it all down, bring it in the house, and I'm gonna be blanching it and freezing it. Blanching and freezing is a great option for people who are not comfortable canning or fermenting, or if the vegetables itself don't lend themselves to be canned uh, and the quality of them won't be very good if you can them. I like to do a variety of preservation methods for the things that we grow around the homestead. However, I do prefer to can as many of our homegrown vegetables as I can uh, because of long-term storage capabilities. The freezer can only hold so much, ferments only last so long. I can do some dehydrating, but our family just doesn't enjoy that very much. The spinach and the other things that we have recently harvested lend themselves to freezing, some of them fermenting, not many of them canning at this point, but we'll do whatever we can to preserve as much of our harvest as possible. This garden just has volunteer dill everywhere. I'm gonna let it keep growing. 
I'm pretty pleased with three nice baskets of spinach for our harvest. This will provide a lot of meals for our family in the future. We're back in the kitchen, guys. So I brought these three baskets in. Grace and I went through when we cut all the stems off. And uh, this basket here is just full of all the stems and like the yucky leaves that weren't very good. So even though we cut all of these things off, I am very pleased with the amount of harvest we have here. The leaves are wilting a little bit because after we did this, then we fixed lunch and it's a little bit warmer in the house today. So that's fine though. So we're gonna get started blanching these to get them ready for the, the freezer. I wanna talk with you a little bit about blanching, what it is and why you should consider doing it prior to freezing the vegetables that you grow in the garden. Now, not all vegetables need to be blanched. Some can go straight into the freezer, but vegetables like spinach, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, turnips, uh, carrots, other things, um, they should be blanched before you freeze them. Now, blanching is really just uh, pre-cooking them a little bit, parboiling or cooking halfway. And the reason you wanna do that is vegetables, once they're harvested, even when they're frozen, there are enzymes within the vegetables that start to deteriorate the vegetables and so after you freeze them and bring them out if they haven't been blanched that enzyme process still happens in the freezer so you'll lose color you'll lose flavor and you'll lose a lot of texture but by blanching them it stops that enzyme um, and actually preserves your vegetables a lot better I'm sure that there are some people that don't blanch any of their vegetables before they go into the, into the freezer and they think that it's just fine and, and everybody's different, but with the hard work that we put into raising our own food, harvesting it, I sure want to do as much as I can to preserve them in a way that we are really gonna like it when we use it. So the first thing I need to do actually is wash these guys. I have both sides of my sink filled with cold water and I'll use it as a double wash system. These guys aren't super dirty, but spinach when it's not washed well, it can kind of feel gritty in your teeth from either the sand or dirt particles that it picks up when it's just out there in the garden. So I will put one load in one side, swish it around, then pick it up out of there, put it in the second side, swish it around there, and then I'll put it um, well, I'll either put it on a towel or I'll start putting it in the hot water. So let's get these washing before we start blanching them. Over here on the stove, I have a pot that is heating up full of water. I'm gonna bring that up to a really hard boil. And then I'm going to be using one of these baskets here that actually goes right inside this pot. I found these this set uh, at a thrift store for like no money at all. So I will be putting the spinach in this pot and then dipping it down into the boiling water. Now each vegetable that you blanch has a different amount of time that it needs to be in the boiling water. There are lists all over the internet telling you how much each vegetable needs to boil before it's done. I will make sure to include a link to one of those charts that shows you how long to cook all these vegetables. I'll put that in a link down in the description section below the video. So this is almost ready. It's almost ready to a boil. I'm gonna put some of the spinach in here in anticipation of getting started. So the water in my pot is boiling really hard. It's a hard boil. So what we're gonna end up doing is lifting up off the top, 
putting in our basket that has the spinach in it, poking it down in the water a little bit, and then we'll put the lid back on. Now the water should come back up to a boil in just a couple of seconds. If it's taking longer than a few seconds for this to come back up to a boil, there's too much of your vegetables in there. Once it comes back up to a boil, that is when you start your timer for however long it is that they need to cook in there. For spinach, it's about two minutes. Start our timer. After that is done, we need to take it out of the boiling water and put all of the vegetables in cold water or ice water until they are cooled down. That stops the cooking process so that your food is not overcooked. The timer went off, so now it's time to get that spinach out of the boiling water and into the cold water. Take my spoon again and swish that around. Until it cools off and then we'll take it out of there and put it on a towel because in the end we're gonna squeeze all of that water out of there before we freeze it because that water will also deteriorate the quality of your frozen food. Well, here is all the blanched spinach it's actually kind of underwhelming every time I blanch greens. This is three big baskets of spinach. But you know what? I will freeze it in small portions so that we can use it inside some amazing recipes like spinach alfredo and things like that. So I drained out each batch and I put it on a towel to kind of drain for a first time and then I transferred it onto this bath towel and what I'm going to do is roll it up and so we can squeeze out a lot more of this moisture before I put it in freezer bags. Now I did a video on this process. I don't think it was last year, I think it might have been the year before. And what I did at that time is I put a bunch of the spinach in one cup measuring cups, which is a really good way to measure out your blanched spinach. And then I popped it out onto a cookie sheet and froze them in that shape and it worked out really well. But back then I was actually using one of those vacuum sealer things and I would vacuum seal a couple of them in a bag and, and that worked really well. But these days I'm really not using my vacuum sealer. I do still have one, but I don't have easy access to the vacuum seal bags. And to be honest, uh, I, I don't know. I just don't find it as convenient now. I'm, I'm not really sure why. So I will be measuring out what I'm putting in the freezer, but I'm going to put them in a freezer bag. When I use freezer bags on the homestead, it is really handy to put the contents in the bag kind of flat. That way it freezes really fast. It thaws out in a warm uh, sink full of water really fast. Um, and it's really pretty easy to get the air out. So this year with this spinach, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, put it in freezer bags flat so that they freeze and thaw pretty easily. So I'm going to unroll this now that I've squeezed a lot of the water out and I'll start portioning out uh, one cup, maybe two cups. I'll see when I get them in the bag uh, so I can get them in the freezer. The reason I portion them out in one cup increments is that is a very common measurement in the recipes that I use it in for the rest of the year. Soups, casseroles, and like I said, uh, the spinach alfredo. That way a lot less of it goes to waste, 
when I thaw it out. Now normally with soups or stews, um, ground hamburger or ground meat, I will um, pat it out flat. But actually now that I have these in here, I think I'm just going to freeze them and roll, you know, like a big roll on the bottom. And I can roll it up like this to squeeze a lot of the air out. to minimize freezer burn. And then I'll freeze it just like that. A marker on it, what it is and the date, and then they could just go in the freezer just like that and then they don't take up much room. So I'll just keep doing that. And then at the end, I'll be able to tell you how many meals worth of spinach we just grew, harvested, and processed and preserved for our family for the rest of the year. So 10 meals worth, you guys, it's not a ton, but I am pleased with it. Uh, it's 10 months worth if we have spinach Alfredo once a month, and it's 10 meals worth. It's more than a week worth of meals for dinner to have spinach in there. So I'm pleased with that. There's nothing wrong with also growing and harvesting spinach in the winter. And you never know, maybe we'll grow some in the greenhouse over the winter. So as far as the other things that we just recently harvested out of the garden, we can also blanch and freeze cauliflower, turnips, those green peas in the pods, and broccoli. So those are some of the other things that I will be doing to put into the freezer. Some of those we will also keep in the refrigerator. Some of those we will try to do some fermenting. So this is just one way to preserve your harvest for the future. You guys, I hope you enjoyed spending some time with Kevin and I in the garden doing a bunch of spring harvesting and learning how to blanch and freeze some of your harvest and why you should blanch and freeze some of your harvest. If you are enjoying our channel and if you enjoyed this video, if you would subscribe to our channel, we would love it. Don't forget to share this with other people who might enjoy it. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.